Good morning. Good morning. Thanks be to God for this day and this season of Thanksgiving. I am thankful for all of you gathered here and those gathered at home and online. May God bless us and may we be thankful for all the ways God is at work here and everywhere that we go. We have a number of announcements this morning. This morning, first, we thank you for your continued participation in masking a council met this week and did talk about how Bristol County is still um, in the red zone. And so we continue in our uh, ministry of masking to protect one another. We have made one exception and you'll notice there are now inserts in your bulletin. And so I invite you to look at those. One of those is if you would like to make a special Thanksgiving offering to this church. Another one, is talking about stewardship. We're talking about stewardship. It's the season of stewardship where we invite you to give of your money in particular to the life and ministry of this church. And so for the next few weeks, you'll be hearing from members of this church and reading about what stewardship is like in other parts of the UCC, the United Church of Christ, our denomination. One other insert is you can order a poinsettia or a Christmas ornament that you would have your choice of a picture of the organ or a picture of the church. So all those inserts are for your perusal and use uh, through the service and beyond. We also have an amazing fellowship opportunity today. We are not able to go downstairs and eat together, but we are able to stay together and decorate the sanctuary. So please stay. Please stay and help us decorate for the Advent Christmas season. We'll be putting up trees and hanging wreaths and all the things to welcome in the season in this space. And if you're unable to do those things, you are welcome to just sit and enjoy the music and chat with one another. We're hoping it can be a joyful time for all of us together. But we are yet not quite to Christmas and Advent. We're in Thanksgiving. Today's an intergenerational Thanksgiving service. So the message of God and Thanksgiving will be led by our children and youth, for which I am very grateful. We're so blessed by God, by you, by all the ways in which we give to the church, and through us, God works miracles in our community and in our midst. And so let us continue our worship with passing the peace in our COVID way, as we say to one another, peace be with you and also with you. May God bless us with peace this day and all days. Amen. I invite all who are willing and able to rise for our call to worship. Our call to worship is a little different today. Those of you on the left, on Neve's side, then there are those of you on the right, on this pulpit side, and we will say our call to worship together. And so let us be. For apples are birds in Alaska. For blueberries, blue skies, and birds. For cranberries, ovens, and cats. For dads and dark chocolate. Thank, thank you, God. God. For, for elephants, Europe, and eggs. For figs, Fridays, and fortune cookies. For gigabytes, gorillas, and great lakes. For happiness, hummingbirds, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. For ice cream, iguanas, Jews, and Jesus. For kangaroos and Kansas. For love, laughter, and life. Thank you, God. For marshmallows and moose. For newts, noses, and nebulas. For ostriches, ostrich, and owls. For the color purple, and people, for Christ. Thank you, God, for rest, reassurance, and relaxation, for seasons and symphonies, for toddlers, tea and turkeys, for Uganda, umbrellas, and the universe. Thank you, God. For violets, for bacteria, and wolves. For xylophones and x-rays, gas, yogurt, and zebras. Thank you, God. Amen. We continue. Please stand for our next hymn. If you're thankful and you know it, it is printed in your bulletin.
are only in the blessing. Fear not, earth. Be glad and celebrate. God has done great things. Fear not, wild animals. The fields and meadows are greening up. The trees are bearing fruit again. A bumper crop of figs and vines. Children of Zion celebrate. Be glad in your God. God has given you a teacher to train you how to live right, teaching you like rain out of heaven, showers of words, to refresh your nourished soul, just as God used to do. And plenty of food for your body, silos full of grain, casks of wine, and barrels of olive oil. about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There is far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than birds. Has anyone by fussing in front of the mirror ever gotten taller by so much as an inch? All this time and money wasted on fashion, do you think it makes that much difference? Instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. They are never prim or shot, but have you ever seen color and design quite like it? The 10 best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never seen, don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do the best for you? What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting, so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provision. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now, and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Here ends the reading. <laughs> gather thinking about thanking, thinking about thanksgiving. In the beginning, there were pilgrims living in Holland, 
religious refugees from England who left their lands and homes looking for freedom of religion. Their pastor, John Robinson, sent them off with this blessing. I am verily persuaded that the Lord hath more truth yet to break out from his holy word. We too remember that God is still speaking, still calling us to new ways of loving, new ways of letting in the light, new ways of welcoming, new ways of being. And we are grateful for God's light. On the Mayflower, there were also indentured servants, orphans, and tradesmen looking for a new start. They sought to work the land to pay off their debts and start a new life in a new world. They were looking for freedom, and freedom for them meant actual freedom in due time. We too remember that God calls us to work for freedom for all, freedom from hate, freedom to worship, freedom to love, and we are grateful, thankful for this freedom. Their journey on the Mayflower was long, 66 days. It was hard. The waves, the seas tossed the ship, and yet there was hope and life. A baby boy was actually born on the Mayflower voyage, christened Oceanus, and God was there with them. We too remember that God is with us amid struggle and storms. There is hope, always hope in the difficulties and challenges that we face. God is always present. And so we are grateful for the hope that God brings into our lives. <laughs> That first winter was hard. Half of the Mayflower pass passengers died. Some wanted to go back. Everyone was tired of living on the boat after that long, long winter. Did you know that they lived on the boat that winter? It was also a hard time for native Wampanoag people. 75% of their people had died from diseases brought from earlier Europeans. The lands that the pilgrims came to were empty, not because they weren't being used, but because whole villages had disappeared due to disease. To this day, Thanksgiving is a national day of mourning for many native tribes. So we too remember that our Thanksgiving story also contains grief and loss. But God remains steadfast. God was present to the grieving pilgrims. God was present to the grieving Wampanoags. God is present to us in our grieving, and we are thankful for God's presence in times of grief and loss. In the spring, the pilgrims and the Wampanoags met. They signed a treaty, one that was never broken across 70 years. Native folks showed pilgrims how to farm in this new place. And soon there was food, cranberries, corn, squash.
and there was great joy. <laughs> the pilgrims were grateful for the help that was given to them and the connections that they made across differences in culture and customs. For this help kept them alive in this world that was so new to them. We too are grateful for the help that we receive from others and the connections we make in this community and across differences of age and race and background and class and experience. We're grateful for the help that we can give one another and those in a world. For God seen in a stranger's outstretched hands. We are grateful for help given and help received. We are grateful for God's help. Yes. <laughs> so in the fall of that year, the pilgrims looked at the food and the land and the community and their neighbors, and they were thankful. They looked at the treaty they had signed with the Wampanoag people and were thankful. They celebrated their harvest festival. There was deer and fish and turkey and lobster. There was corn and vegetables, and there was a time to sit together. And they said, thank you, God. And so we too, this week, sit down with family and friends, with strangers and acquaintances. We look at all that we have received, all that we're blessed with, and all that we are able to give. And we celebrate the goodness of God and the multicolored pathways of love and loss, of hope and heartache, help offered, help received, all that has come to us. We look at the abundance on our tables here and in our homes and are thankful. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. I actually would invite you to remain seated for our next hymn as our kids are going to help lead us. And there are hand motions to this one. So our next hymn is I've Got Peace Like a River.
I'm so thankful we have so much joy that we have to figure out how to go around it. <laughs> around it and through it, that it surrounds us. We gather in this time to pray, to pray for what are we are thankful for in this particular season, and to pray for those needs that are deep in our hearts, deep in our souls, that we might find peace and love and faith. So let us pray. Holy God, we gather in this Thanksgiving season grateful. Grateful that we are here. Grateful for life. We are grateful for community, especially the community of the church. We are grateful for ways in which we can give to make others' lives better. And we are grateful that we can turn to you in the midst of our struggles and losses, in the times of anxiety, in the middle of the night. For you are our God, and you are present, and you shower blessings of love and hope and light upon us. Today, we are grateful for the food we will dedicate to those in need. We are grateful for our children and youth of this congregation who lead us in ways of faith and love. We are grateful for our world, even as it's hurting. We ask, oh God, that we might be part of the solution of food and stability, of heat and health for all those in need that we might make our nation one of justice and hope, that we might work for racial justice, and we might work to close the divide of income inequality, that we might work so that all our veterans are recognized and helped, so we might work to be that shining light on a hill. God, hear these prayers, and the prayers so deep that we don't have words. Hear us in this moment of silence as we open our very souls to you. these prayers, spoken, unspoken, God, we know you hear us. And so hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. stewardship message, I do want to offer one more prayer, and this is a prayer from Tuzi. As her church, Bethel UCC in Arlington, Virginia, has gone through the hard process of becoming a legacy church, which means that the active ministry and ministry and mission of that church is over. As they close their doors, 
and they lift up the ministry, and this was a very active social justice church. So that work doesn't go away, but it provides seeds in the hearts of all the many who have been touched, and so we pray for them today as they make that final closing decision. Amen. Good morning. Whoops, and I broke it. <laughs> okay. Also part of the short community. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm in good company. We still. <laughs> uh, good morning. So um, I was asked to speak to you about why I give to this church. Um, so I did a little reflection. Um, and the things that came to mind to talk about this morning were support and stepping up. Um, and so I want to just talk about a couple things that I have experienced here. There's so many there's so many ways that we can think about just today or last week or last month that we've supported each other. Um, and it continues. It's been like that since I've got, come here. And I've been here, I think it's like almost 10 years. So um, goes by fast. So um, I'm just going to pick a few, just three um, stories, three really, really quick of times that I've either come up or someone's come up and asked for support, and this congregation has stepped up. Um, so one of the ones I recalled was when we wanted to do support the Alzheimer's um, Association, and this church has support had supported the Alzheimer's Association for a long time, but we, um, I came up. Uh, one Sunday, and um, I had asked a few people about walking because there's an Alzheimer's walk, and um, in the New Bedford area, they, you know, they generally uh, fall over New Bedford, so we could kind of join in. But I didn't want to walk by myself. Why would I want to walk by myself? So I asked all of you, and I also told you that if um, you couldn't walk that day or couldn't walk in the walk that they were doing, that you could be a sponsor for one of the walkers. I immediately, in a day, that day, had eight to 10 people wanted to walk. And two weeks, fast forward to two weeks, we went and did our walk, we raised a thousand dollars in like no time. Everyone stepped up, supported all of our workers, had sponsors, and we had a great time. We felt great about all of that. And this church supported us with a thousand dollars for Alzheimer's. Um, so we brought joy and um, more recently, um, we've asked for food donations. Susie and I have had our cars, our trunks, filled with food. I don't know, Susie, how many times have we done this? Four or five times since August? Five, yeah. yeah. Our cars, back seat, our cars are full. Thankfully, we don't have a passenger with us when we do this because we can't fit anybody in the car. And our trunks are full with food items. And they go to Church of Our Savior in Somerset, our, one of our neighbor churches and they have a food pantry, so we replenish, replenish their food pantry. Um, and Susie has brought some of the food items um, to a group in New Bedford who's helping the homeless. So we asked, and you guys stepped up, and it's awesome. Um, and then, of course, most recently, the veterans suffer. Um, we have an awesome group here. Sarah led, led us this year. Um, everyone steps up. You can't have so many volunteers just to work the event, we have so many people donate money, can't, um, drop in money in the bucket, support the expenses of the, of the supper, and we are a big supporter of our veterans in this area. It's amazing the energy and the love that comes from that event. And so, again, we, you know, we've been asked to step up and we do it, right? So today, I'm asking you to step up and support our church and it's funny, you feel a little differently about that. It's, it's always, for me, it's easier to help other people, but today we need to help ourselves. Um, we have expenses here. Um, the finance team has done an unbelievable job cutting any expenses that they can. So now we're at the point where, I know at my house you either cut expenses to make the budget, or you have more income coming in. It's one or the other, right? Um, so now we need more income coming in so that we can stay together and continue to do the awesome work that we do. So, um, I, you know, one of the things that I love here is that we come together, we care about each other. I don't, um, don't want to miss out on any of that. Um, I want to be able to see all of you 
care for all of you, stay together and share what we have. So I know I'm gonna find some way to step up my donation this year. Um, and I know that we can all do that, even if it's a little bit, um, if we can all do that together, we can make, make this work. So I thank you. I am so thankful today just for everything that's happened today. Um, God is good all the time. All the time? All the time. God is good. Thank you. Thank you, Charlene. God is indeed good all the time. And so today we offer our gifts. Um, we do this in our COVID way of offering before and after the service. There's an offering plate here or outside. And so we invite you to offer your gifts and we will dedicate them in this moment in time. Grateful and thankful for all that God has done and all the ways <laughs> that we are church together. <laughs>
I'm so thankful and grateful to our choir that brings such joy and reflection to us. And so, as we dedicate our offerings today, as we dedicate our music, our hearts, we also bring forward our offering and our gifting of Thanksgiving baskets to the community. So, let us bring them forward. Thank you, God, for all that we see, all that we are, and all you are calling us to be. With a special blessing on these baskets going out to those who may have a happier Thanksgiving. Amen. And so our closing hymn is For the Fruit of All Creation. I invite all who are willing and able to rise. It is printed in your bulletin. Oh. 